What is code switching? Code switching is when people are speaking and they move from one language or one variety to another at the end of a sentence or even within a sentence. It usually refers to one person speaking and not to two people mixing up languages and it usually refers to more than words or a phrase. So we're not talking about loan words or a borrowing as such. We're talking about a conversational strategy that means that the speaker can move between languages for one reason or another. Now, there are traditionally three kinds of code switching, three normal categories, according to the reasons why people move from one language to another. The first of them would be addressee-based code switching, and this is the one that's most commonly observed. I see it here at the, at the cafeteria, um, where we live in a, a basically Catalan-speaking uh, area of Spain, but other people don't speak Catalan, they speak Spanish, and others, uh, visiting exchange students, they speak English. So we'll have people having a conversation in Catalan between two or three people. Another person comes along whose preference is not Catalan, it's for Spanish. Often they will switch to Spanish, but then mix them up because the people who've lived here for a while pick up enough Catalan to follow a conversation and you can have uh, code switching going on there. Now the same thing might happen if an English person joins the conversation. Uh, the people I teach do have English and, and quite good English as well. And so you could even have code switching between those three languages in accordance with the person you're speaking to. So you're speaking to the English, the exchange student in English, but you might go back to, uh, to uh, your friend in Catalan and then the other person there who hasn't been here for that long, you'd speak to them in Spanish. You can have these things mixed up. That's addressee-based code switching. You switch according to the person you're talking to. My, my kids are uh, bilingual, quatrilingual, but um, they will change language without thinking according to the person they're speaking with. They'll speak English to me, Catalan to, to their mum or other languages that have been there in a, in a long and complicated history. Okay, addressee based. It's who you're speaking to. The other uh, very common type is, is topic based. And that is what you're speaking about. And I'll see this at the cafeteria as well when I observe my students or, or they do research on their conversations. Often if they're talking about something they're doing in class, a lot of the language will shift to the language of the classroom, which is English. So they might be discussing uh, homework uh, in English and then change topic to where they're going out afterwards or sport or something like that and move to Catalan because that's the language appropriate for that topic. I think Janet Holmes gives an example of uh, Chinese students in England who are, who are sharing a, an apartment and uh, while they're cooking great, she is Cantonese, Cantonese food, they're speaking Cantonese because that's the language of food and their culture for food. And then they're studying economics, they go to talk about their homework and economics and they switch to English because they're studying that in English. That's topic-based code switching. A third kind of code switching uh, is what the textbooks call metaphorical code switching, or symbolic, I think is a better term, when people switch languages to achieve a, a certain effect. And my favorite example of this is a former prime minister of Spain, Felipe González, many years ago now, who was from Andalusia, but he was president, well, prime minister, sorry, president of, of Spain. And when he's in the parliament, he will speak very standard statesman-like Spanish. Uh, and he could do that in speeches, in public speeches as well. But when he's addressing the workers or working class issues or 
he's giving a speech in Andalusia, his variety will shift from standard Spanish to quite strong Andalusian Spanish. Because by, by making that switch, you get all those people, the working class people, on your side because you show you can speak their language. Does he change because of a topic? Not really. Does he change because he's addressing different people? Not really. He's changing to show that he can change, to change, uh, to, to, to give his own persona and his political appeal this added dimension, as one would, I guess, as one would uh, hope to do when using a metaphor in English. I say it this way because I gain a certain prestige or I gain certain connotations. Another example might be the, the common thing where, where a parent is telling off a child and they'll say it first without being very angry and, and use the child's, you know, pick it up, sweetie. And uh, no, they're not going to pick it up. Annie, pick it up, I said. And they're not going to pick up. Annabelle Smith, pick it up. Okay, what's happened? Their speech register and, and the, the, the names that they're using have changed and they've moved from one kind of English to another kind of English to connote anger and authority and forcefulness. Okay, that might qualify as metaphorical code switching, depending on how you want to define what a language is for you or a variety in this case. There's another kind of uh, code switching called code mixing and this is when basically people are having fun. Uh, speakers of Spanglish tend to do this in the United States. And they're moving with a bit of this, a bit of that. And they're, they're, they're just playing with the language, living in both of them at the same time. And there's no other logic beyond that, um, enjoying the alternates of language. And so that would be called code mixing, which you can classify as separate or as a part of code switching, if you like. It's like the, the non-logic solution uh, within a logical paradigm. Now, I'm interested in code switching uh, for several reasons. Uh, I'll just cite this briefly from Gall, an old definition. This is 1988. Code switching is a conversational strategy used to establish, cross or destroy group boundaries, to create, evoke or change interpersonal relations with their rights and obligations. But let me stay with the bit that establish, cross or destroy group boundaries. That is, when people are code switching, it's not, unless it's code mixing, but uh, they're doing something quite serious. Uh, they're defining where their group is and where it finishes, but they're also allowing the boundary to be thick. It can become a space. It's not we're here, you're there and no conversation. It's like we're here, and you're there, and we can create the space in which we can both work together. Uh, it indicates that, that our so societies are not made up of discrete groups, that the boundaries between groups are quite fluid, changeable, and can be worked on. And that's what people are doing when they code switching. And so it challenges a lot of our very basic ideas of the way we, we live together as a society. And I think it challenges it positively. It shows that there is a, a, a very creative aspect to these thick boundaries. Now, I'm interested in code switching because in the places I live, there's lots of it, especially here in Catalonia. So it's, it's, it, it's one of the basic kinds of linguistic work that people do. Secondly, it's dealing with quite serious issues Remembering that we have an independence movement here, which is largely language-based between Catalan and Spanish. But it deals with them in a non-disruptive way. And it, it can show a certain flexibility and creativity in handling very serious problems. Uh, so, for example, we're finding more and more code switching in literature in English. Um, most post-colonial literature will have some degree of... of uh, code switching in it and it's it's telling us quite forcefully that 
we can no longer believe of the myth of our literature in English or one language domination or one language, one mindset or any of these, the, the, these crazy monolingual myths that have been dominating 19th century thought. In doing that, code switching becomes a very forceful argument from practice, from what the people actually do, against ideologies of immersion. This idea that to, to learn a language completely, you have to do everything in that language. If you're going to learn Catalan, you've got to go to school and do everything in Catalan. You've got to do to learn English, go to England, go to the, to the United States and have your whole life in English and you will really learn the language. Well, yes, indeed, you will indeed learn the language more completely and more intimately than otherwise. But most lives are not lived monolingually. The, 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 the very presence of, of, of code switching, its, its activity and its vitality, suggests that you will learn things through immersion, but you're not going to learn to use the language in a creative and pleasurable way the way most people are doing around us. For all those reasons, I think code switching is worth a very serious look and that we should be doing a lot more research on it.